if you're struggling to find the perfect lightweight yarn to match your pattern, then this is going to be the video for you. In this video, we're going to take a look at different yarn weights and how you can fit them with your pattern and figure out relevant or the right kind of needle sizes you're going to have for it. So with yarn weights, when you talk about yarn weights, that's the thickness of the yarn or how fat the yarn is. And they're usually lumped into different categories or different names, but those categories, they, they really, they kind of overlap a little bit and they're not, they're not very exact. They're just ballparks to kind of give you an idea of how they're going to, of how they're going to impact your, your, your knitting and to just give you a general idea of where they fit. The other kind of things that come into play when you're looking at how a yarn will behave are what we looked at already, how it was spun, woolen spun versus worsted spun. And also then what we haven't been looking at here, but we'll look at in future videos is the different kinds of fibers that are in there because they're going to behave differently as an animal, as a plant. So those are all other things that will impact how things are going to work in your pattern. But today we're going to specifically look at how fat your yarn is or your yarn weight and look at the lighter weight end of the ranges. So lighter weight ones, we're going to start first of all with the lightest of all, which would be known as lace weight. And the next ones after that are going to be kind of fingering or four ply and sports weight. But lace weight is the first one up. So lace weight yarn, can it's the general overall name. And the reason it's called that is primarily because it's used in it lace. It is it's so fine and very, very thin when you're looking at it. So it's going to create a very small stitch. Generally speaking, also, when you're talking about lace weight yarn and you're using it specifically for a lace pattern, like in a shawl or even if you had a very lacy cardigan, you're going to use a needle size that looks too big, that basically relative to the size of the yarn, the needle size is going to look a little big. That's going to create kind of big, slightly sloppy looking stitches that will not look right until you come to the very end of the process and you block it and you open it up and you do a lace blocking that really opens up those stitches. And so that's why it is known as lace weight because it's generally used for lace knitting. So if you didn't want lace knitting and you wanted to just use the correct needle size for that to get like a stockinette stitch structure, you're gonna want a tiny needle. You're probably gonna be talking about like a one and a half or a two millimeter needle. So tiny, yeah, like US size zero or zero zero. So really, really small needle is what you're going to be looking at for that. Um, but generally speaking, you'll be moving up into more three millimeter, three and a half, four millimeter needles with it opened up very wide. Now, the only exception to that might be something like a brushed lace weight, particularly a brushed mohair, because that blooms and it opens up. So it's quite happy to be knit a little bit more loosely. So the kind of, it kind of defies the categorization, so to speak. In terms of the kind of yardage you're looking at, um, this one is Gleam Lace by, uh, Vivace, it's Vivacious Gleam Lace from Four Ply, from, uh, from Fiber Spates. And it's got 800 meters or 874 yards in 100 grams. And that would be pretty typical for lace weight. So it means that you get an awful lot of yardage because the yarn is so fine. So it goes much, much further. It spreads out because it's got just a very narrow yarn. If you like the idea of lace weight, but it feels too fine and uncomfortable to knit with, which sometimes it can be, I find that it's hard to grip it. T putting it doubled up or perhaps having two different yarn weights held together so that you make it thicker, you can create kind of a nice interesting marl effect is another way that you can potentially use a lace weight yarn. So that's the lightest of the yarns we'll be looking at. I'm just pausing the video for a second to remind you to pop in and subscribe. It is one of the best ways of making sure that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. But now back to the videos. Next up is going to be the, the second category, which is going to fall into fingering weight or four ply, or sometimes known as sock yarn. I do have, here we go, I've got an actual sock yarn here. This categorization kind of, you got some of them that will fall into light fingering. So it's going to be much finer and thinner. And then other ones will be heavy fingering weight. In the UK, the term four ply is used quite often and sock yarn kind of speaks for itself. It would fall into this weight category, but for sock yarn, it's often going to have higher twists, 
possibly have some nylon added into it so it's going to be nice and durable for actual for for knitting socks so that you won't get wear and tear on the heels and on the toes and things like that um, in terms of the yardage the this one is vivacious four ply and for 100 grams you've got 365 meters or 399 yards so that is a little bit on the heavier um, means that like this cardigan here is autumn whispers and it's knit at a fairly it's not too tight not too loose so a fairly even gauge and that one would have been three and a half millimeter needles and a heavy fingering knits quite comfortably at that if you want to use it for something like socks you're going to drop down your needle size because you want your stitches smaller so for socks about two and a half millimeters so a good bit smaller again to make very small stitches is what you want and you might have a slightly finer yarn like this so this is coop knit socks yeah and it's 50 grams and it would be 212 meters in that so for that you're going to have for 100 grams it'll be 424 so it's a finer or lighter weight one so it's going to make smaller stitches so particularly nice for socks and things like that and then this final one here is somewhere in between because this one is uh, 366 meters actually it's a little bit closer to this and this is life in the long grass singles so it is knit up a little bit differently or spun up it's single ply a little bit more uh, it's got a little bit felt going to it but because it wouldn't have the same durability it would be really good for things like shawls so it's used in neon skylines here where it's knit a little bit more loosely with and um, this would be like a it's either three and three quarters or four millimeter but for with that it allows you to block it stretch it up open it up so you want very often for that style yarn um, is it really quite likes to be blocked and it gets very floppy and very relaxed um, as uh, for this from in terms of the stitches so the second one we just looked at now was our four ply fingering weight which is going to be roughly about 400 meters per 100 grams heavy is going to have a little less light will go on the other side so but that's kind of the general ballpark of where it's going to hit third one and final one we're going to look at is sports weight so this here is my Nua sport and it's going to be a little bit heavier or a little bit thicker so to speak than four ply this one is a little bit on the heavier side it almost veers into a light DK weight yarn um, and with this you're generally going to be kind of in terms of needle size moving up again so you're going from three and a half millimeter needles it's happy to be knit with up to a little bit looser to four millimeter you're less likely to knit this very loosely the way you would some of the others and block it out it's generally going to be knit at a gauge that gives you a nice consistent even stitch gauge and you know a nice tension so not too thick not too thin I quite like this kind of this weight yarn for in transitional garments so for autumns and for when you're moving into the um, the, the springtime and things like that because it's it's a little bit warmer than a four ply uh, garment but it's not so heavy as double knitting or DK where it that's kind of moving more into winter or cooler weather so the kind of um, examples of that when you're knitting it up for garments is this is a child's garment it's it's the Ravi it's the baby Ravi Ravi junior but there's an adult version of this as well and this one was knit on three and three quarter millimeter needles and it's mainly garter stitch and you can see that gives really nice texture and density to it so it does work very very well on that kind of needle size range and it's heavy enough to keep you warm but not so dense that you're going to overheat in it so good for those in between um, and you can see this is it knit up here on a slightly looser needle size and blocked more aggressively combined with the four ply so this one is uh, on the end skylines this is the frog on the wall being knit with um, the singles here so you can see how all of these they can be knit at range of sizes with different types of garments um, I suppose the one other thing I should probably show you here is I don't have it here but I was going to I can pop up an image of it showing you Clypea which is a hat that is knit in sport and that's knit, lit a little bit tighter gives a slightly denser gauge so the sports weight can knit more densely smaller stitches for a bit more warmth and a thicker fabric 
So this should give you an idea of the kind of things you can do with lightweight yarns. They're very versatile because you can do everything from socks and shawls through accessories up to garments. So you just need to decide what you want to knit now. Thank you.